everybody. Uh, my name is John Fitzsimons, as Sean says. I'm the Chief Executive uh, of Camara Education. So what is Camara? Well, this year in Camara, what we will do is we will give 250,000 students and children the 21st century gift of digital literacy in countries such as Ireland, in the Caribbean, and also Africa. I'm looking out at an auditorium filled with iPads, and uh, I'm sitting beside uh, people who are tweeting frantically here, and we're all wondering how the hell did we get into this? Well, unfortunately, for about four billion of the seven billion inhabitants on the planet, uh, technology is out of their reach. They may have, at very best, an old blockia, as my niece calls it, an old mobile phone, uh, but they don't have access to computers, the internet, and opportunities. So this year, 250,000 kids will get this skill that they wouldn't have got without Kamara Education. Um, in order to achieve that, we have a team of 200 people, approximately, it changes day by day, week by week, that uh, today will go to work uh, and work hard to achieve that goal of hitting a quarter of a million students this year. That team is in 12 different countries. Uh, so it's a very diverse, uh, very big team, I suppose, certainly in the context of Kamara only been in operation for the last seven years. So what's interesting of the 200 people is about 70% of the 200 people actually aren't paid. So you can throw the abuse at exploitation now, I'll duck. Um, but what's really interesting as well is of the 30% that are paid, pretty well much uniformly, they're all underpaid for the value that they are. So uh, today, just briefly, I want to share a couple of tips of how to, to how I suppose Kamara built that team that's really driving what we do. So last week, after Sean gave me the phone call, I was reading the Irish Times and I saw a quote, uh, this quote actually in the Irish Times. I don't know if it was the same day as uh, the 2023, uh, Lucy, but if not, <laughs> it was close. So lone heroes with good ideas only succeed in the movies. This is from a guy called Bill Lau. He, he works with a guy called Sean O'Sullivan, who's in Dragon's Den. He's, a, he's an investor. He's not, uh, not the biggest investor in Ireland, I'm sure, but he's an investor. And I thought it was really interesting as an investor that uh, his focus is not on the idea, it's not on the entrepreneur, but it's on people, not the person. So um, I'd obviously completely agree with him that what's critical to growing uh, your business, social enterprise, commercial enterprise, is, is having a really good team. Um, just another interesting piece of information was that uh, I was doing a little bit of research and I noticed that of the reasons why businesses succeed, 59% um, of businesses put it down as the quality of their team as the number one reason. So about more important than the idea, more important than the plan, more important than the strategy, more important than the name, uh, is the team. So I just want to put it a bit of context in terms of how important certainly I believe that building this team is. So, we have a weighing scales and a cheese slicer. If anyone in the room can tell me what company started out selling these, you will win the significant gift of a free garlic. <laughs> Any takers? I guarantee everybody in this room knows this company. Any suggestions? Not one. But Microsoft from the front row, second row. Close, close, but not correct. Believe it or not, last year IBM hit their 100th birthday, their centenary. And um, IBM, as everybody knows, is a hugely successful international blue chip company. They started out 100 years ago selling cheese slicers and weighing scales. Over the course of the 100 years, they have transformed multiple times over. They, IBM actually invented the personal computer. Now they don't either manufacture personal computers or they don't sell personal computers. So even in the last 20, 30 years, they've completely transformed what they do. And what's very interesting is a quote from the founder, a guy called Tom Davis, is that over the 100 years, the only thing that hasn't changed in IBM is their beliefs. And I thought, I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty amazing. Everything else, the people come and go, the products, the services, everything is changing, but their beliefs have always stayed central to, to, to their organization. I mean, if you ask me about Kamara, I mean, I can tell you very quickly that Kamara have three beliefs. 
So anybody working in Camara or associated with Camara, they, they, they believe that first that poverty is wrong in the 21st century, it shouldn't be here, we're more advanced than that and we need to get rid of it. The second belief is they believe, we believe, that education is the most significant tool we have to eradicate poverty. And the third belief is that we feel that technology has the ability to make the greatest change ever seen in the history of education. So it's really important if you have an idea or you're trying to grow a business is what are the core, what's the core to, to, to that organiza organization and what is the belief? Because then in the context of trying to build a team is you need to go out then and find people with similar beliefs. So you need to match the organization's beliefs with the individual's beliefs. And that's, that applies in terms of a commercial enterprise or a social enterprise, doesn't matter. IBM's are customer service, always taking care of the customer, et cetera, et cetera. So they're, they're looking for people that are passionate about customer service. And if they, if, if, if they, if they find them, they will continue the, the, the path of growth of IBM. So, that, so that's the first thing. The second thing is brands, right? So about 18 months ago, Camara, Camara's old logo, you saw the new one on the screen at the start, used to be a computer uh, inside, sorry, a, a picture of Africa inside a computer, because that's kind of what we, what we did. And uh, we're now in Ireland, we're in Jamaica, we're in a couple of other countries, so we obviously had to change the logo. So we sat down and we asked ourselves 100 questions, because I'm sure people in the audience have gone through this process before, but when you're doing something like this, you really go back to basics and ask some of the fu very fundamental questions. And one of the questions is, is obviously, who are we trying to design the brand for? And we thought, yeah, the schools, the colleges that receive uh, the technology that we give and, and, and get their students digitally literate, uh, the companies and individuals in Ireland and other countries that give computers, donate the used computers to Camara. And um, I suppose what one thing that did come up in the discussions that we had that was new is that we should also be f factoring in potential team members into our brand. So if you think of the likes of, like Google is up on the screen, for example, I mean, Google are brilliant at building a brand that's cool, if it's innovative, and people want to work for Google. I'm sure there's lots of people in the room here that will gladly take a job from Google. You get free lunches, you know, I know you get free, you know, they're just really good at, at making sure their brand is, is, is appealing to prospective employees. And Google gets some of the best talent available in Ireland because of that. So when you're, I guess the lesson here is when you are building your brand, don't just think about the customer, think about appealing to the people that you want to come and work for you as well, because they're, the, they're, they're, they're gonna be the single biggest influence in how uh, successful the organization is. The third one is, not garlic, passion, all right? This is the fruit variety on screen. So one thing that I just, and I do a lot of interviewing, I just can't get over is the importance of passion. I interviewed a guy last week who will remain, definitely remain nameless for the really key position we have in Africa. And, you know, standard interview question, I asked him, why do you want to work for Kamara? And he goes, well, the, the, the country the job is in is, is a lot better than the country I'm currently working in. And I was just like blown away in all the wrong <laughs> direction. Uh, I thought the guy was going to say, well, you know, I just believe that poverty is wrong. I believe the importance of education. I believe technology can, you know, and I thought, yeah, this is the guy. And instead, within five minutes of the interview, he was dead, dead in the water. So you have to have, you have to find people that have passion for what you do. If it's growing garlic or, you know, whatever it is you do, you need to find people that, um, that have that shared passion. So there's, there's just a couple of tips in terms of, uh, that, that we can share, certainly from Kamara, in terms, of, in terms of growing the team. And really, you know, you know you've hit success, and you know, uh, George and, and, and Michael have tipped, uh, touched on a couple of these points earlier. You know, you, you know you've hit success when you, know, you, you have a team of people that really love, you know, love what they do, because then people will see they love what they do, and they'll do it better than anyone else out there. They may not be necessarily smarter than everyone, but if they've the passion and they've the fit, they'll do, do a better job than, than most people out there. And they, personally, and the organization, collectively, will be a success. So I guess it's also just really important to state that it's not just about finding the team, building the team, because there is the important part of actually retaining the team. 
Now, I'm not advocating the use of handcuffs necessarily. It is a, a, a potential tactic, but I couldn't say it works. So like what's, what is really important as well is to focus on making sure that in an organization, when you identify and bring in the right talent, that you actually retain the talent. And I think you know, that what's out there in terms of information, in terms of retaining that, is, is very well documented. I mean, you need, to, you need to be really good communicators in your organization. You need to have a shared vision. So it's really important when you're bringing people together that they all buy into the single vision. <laughs> Um, and you need, to, you need to manage your people, you know, you need to make sure they're happy and that they feel they're growing as the organization is growing. So that's, so that's really important. So to conclude, I suppose I was going to put up a picture of the Irish rugby team, but I had to kind of delete that one yesterday. Um, so I went back, uh, what, six or eight months to, to, to maybe last May, and just to explain um, to, to, to finish on one, one positive story. So I guess if you look at Leinster Rugby, okay, and if you just think about what I covered in that, I mean, Leinster, um, for any rugby aficionados in the audience, I mean, five, ten years ago used to have what people would say maybe a soft underbelly. They weren't as tough as Munster, you know. They were, they were good, and when they were winning, they were great. But when the, when, when the real dirty battles uh, were, were, were underway, they were not really found. So, I mean, the, the, their kind of belief system was wrong. And over a couple of years, a guy called Michael Checker come in, and he rebuilt their belief system to really, uh, to really give them that fight. Um, the other thing Leinster have done incredibly well in the last five or ten years is built the brand. I mean, the Leinster rugby brand is just really, really um, a, a positive. There's a match on at the weekend, and I have it's a ladies' night, and I just saw an email from me yesterday, and it's incredible. And I don't know, I'm going, but I'm thinking of actually cross-dressing maybe. And, uh, but, <clears throat> but the point being is that with a really strong brand, they were are and were able to attract the likes of you know, a Brad Thorne, who's probably somewhere in there, one of the best rugby players in the world, uh, Rocky Elsom, these guys too, because Leinster, the perception of Leinster internationally was really, was really positive and really strong. I mean, the other thing is just passion, and I mean, this is like completely obvious, I guess, in a, in a, in a rugby context, but, you know, it's just amazing what these guys, why I love rugby is it's just amazing what these guys do on a week-to-week -week basis in terms of what they bring to the pitch, and their absolute undying passion to, 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 to get that victory is just so incredible. And, you know, for me personally, it's about if we can get a team of people in Camara that have 70% of that passion, we'll be, we'll be right along the way. And finally, obviously, Leinster, like most organizations, are not perfect because, as you probably heard in the last week or two, that while they've been very good and successful at attracting the, uh, the right resources and building the team in Leinster, we did lose Johnny Sexton to Racing, Racing Metro. So again, going back to my final point in the presentation, is it's important not just to attract and build a team, but also to make sure you do what you can to retain the key talent in your team. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much, John. Um, you spoke with passion about passion and the, the need and the importance of passion within an organization. Um, I'm thinking of the passion of one key person within the organization in particular, and that's the entrepreneur or the founder. Um, and I think that sometimes there potentially is a danger that that passion for what they, they started can maybe blind them to some of the, the decisions that need to be made and maybe blind them to the, what role they best serve within an organization. I think Kamara's had a very interesting journey in that regard. And you might just touch on, on how you, you know, the founder syndrome was, was answered uh, and, and how the organization moved forward. Sure, yeah. I thought I actually got away with my lie because unlike the rest of the panel, I'm actually not the founder or I'm not a social entrepreneur. I'm uh, <laughs> a cheat. I'll leave now. I know. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, a guy called Cormac Lynch uh, founded Kamara. He's still involved with Kamara. In fact, he's bringing Kamara to the, to the US and to the UK at the moment. So Cormac brought me in about three years ago. Um, I, I, like Michael, used to earn good money and had a nice job in Dell, but I hated it. And now I have a really good job that I really enjoy, but I earn crap all. Um, but I have no regrets. So, um, yeah, I mean, my experience is that I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't have the balls, to be quite honest and to be probably quite rude, of some of the people here to actually uh, come up with an idea and to go and turn it into a reality. My skill sets are elsewhere. I'm very good at taking an entity and growing it. 
um, and, 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 and I'm fine with that. Um, so Cormac uh, brought me in and, and probably realised that his, his skill set was very much in the entrepreneur mould and quite clearly was given he, the, where he brought Camara within the first four or five years. Um, but it's really important as well, and I think he would acknowledge it himself, that he had brought it to that point, and his skill sets are associated with that. And yeah, he's brilliant at bringing it to the UK and the US at the moment and internationalising Kamara is brilliant, but also that he needed to bring in uh, new skills, new ideas, uh, maybe a pro more professional approach, um, which, is, which is why he, 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 uh, he, he did with me. And I guess, um, you know, I, I'm still obviously working with Kamara, so a bit like what Michael said earlier, it's a bit of the yin and the yang, and that works really, really well. So again, it's a, it's a good question, and it, there's probably a lesson there that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you need to be looking at, maybe after a couple of years, am I the best person to bring it forward from that point? Because maybe the answer is no. John Fitzsimons, thank you very much.